so good morning all so today is our third class so so i would like to show you today the important structural components of the bridges okay so with the pictorial representation i would like to show you at the same time uh, how to plan the bridge so what are the important parameters for the planning of the bridges okay to construct i mean to construct any bridge so what is the planning to be taken place before construction everything we will try to discuss is today okay right hmm. guys is my screen visible yes, sir. yes right okay see uh, first of all we will see uh, the definition of a bridge in a different perspective okay so because uh, you know you can define the definition of a bridge in different different ways so let's see uh, basically bridge is a structure so which is going to built to span a physical obstacle so yesterday we have discussed the same thing so to bridge a gap i mean to bridge between obstacles so we are going to construct a bridge in the same way so like what are the obstacles like you know body of water it might be a valley it might be a road it might be a railways you know it might be a canal you know so without closing the way underneath so we are going to construct a bridge to cover that particular obstacle okay so it is going to be constructed for the purpose of providing passage so why we are going to construct this bridge we are going to construct this bridge only to provide the passage over the obstacle what kind of passage it might be a road it might be a railway it might be a airways it might be even a canals okay so because canals also will cross the another canal understand so like that uh, usually so sometimes that can be determined to cross you know either way so this is how we can define the bridge so coming to basically the beam bridges so because in your fourth module so we are having uh, rcc bridges and fifth module will be a girder bridges so basically beam bridges are the simplest and oldest type of bridge so which usually uh, we consider them right and you know basic and there are different types of bridges like you know truss bridges also will be there so where it can able to carry uh, heavy loads and matter so we call it as a load carrying bridges load bearing bridges under okay so if you see all our railway bridges they are all truss bridges okay so that's how usually you see you see two different types of bridges one will be the beam bridges which will be like an rcc bridges the other one will be the truss bridges which will be made up of steel bridges okay so in that again there will be different types of bridges with based on the different components that all we will discuss it today okay uh let me show you yeah yesterday we have already gone through the uh, components of uh, typical bridge structure so i think we already gone through yesterday okay so in detail i will show you uh, pictorial uh, uh, representation of uh, components okay right so as i told you so bridge is having a substructure and superstructure right so substructure will have foundations piers and abutments and superstructures will have structure which is above the bearing okay so here you can see the bearing position so above the bearing position whatever the structure you have that structure will comes under the superstructures below the bearings all will be comes under the substructures okay right see uh as i told you i am you know good enough in dealing this subject so these are the bridges which i have executed in uh, outer ring road so this is the bridge before the construction i mean uh, i mean on at, at the time of construction so this bridge after completion this is the way how it looks okay so this this is the bridge which was constructed at outer ring road this is our outer ring road at dundigal right so i worked as a bridge engineer these are the bridges which i have executed and yeah this is also the one and this is also the one so this i can call it as a double cell box culvert right so we can call it as a minor bridge why because the span of the bridge is very less so by the way we can call it as a minor bridge and matter okay like that this is also one of the bridge see the difference you can observe it clearly so this bridge if you find if you see this bridge this bridge is having only a slab which we call it as a voided slab okay it is not a girder bridge it is a voided slab bridge okay and if you see this this one 
double cell box culvert so there is no girder at all so this bridges are called a slab bridges under vidni okay so why because there is no girder at all this is not a flyover usually in flyovers you can see a girder above the girder there will be a deck kada so in this you can't find any kind of uh, decks so by that this is called a slab bridges under so if you try to observe this bridge so you can see all girders all these are all pre stressed girders okay pre stressed girder all the pre stressed girders there will be a deck okay so this is what uh, your fifth module girder bridges under okay there will be a girder over the girder there will be a slab so usually we prefer these kind of bridges for long span bridges and matter okay at the same time to carry heavy loads yeah this is also one of the bridge as i am telling talking about this is a slab bridge it doesn't have any kind of girder okay there are two abutments or an abutment there is only a rcc slab okay so these are these, these are the bridges which i have executed right uh, there is another major bridge which i have executed in uh, as i told you in karimnagar so which is uh, crossing uh, the river uh, you know uh, lower maner yeah this this is the one right so this is the maner bridge okay it crossing the backwater of the maner dam right so if anyone is uh, aware about karimnagar i think uh, oh, i mean about when you are crossing this uh, maner uh, backwater flow so there is a bridge so that bridge is the um, maner bridge okay so if i i will show you the uh, you know structure of this uh, bridge also like i mean uh, the picture your diagrams of this bridges also when we are dealing with uh, you know um, in detail right okay so let's go through the components in detail first let's see the substructure components so what are the substructure components amma so usually the substructure in the sense we are talking about foundation so foundations nothing but piles okay piles footing pcc okay and pile cap pier pier cap abutment wall abutment cap see for any bridge these are the bridge components which comes under the substructure understand piles so when we go for piles amma when the, when so pile is nothing but a deep foundation isn't it okay when the soil is weak okay till that extent we have to go into deep okay till you arrive the hard strata okay rock strata okay then we will go for piles apart from piles you will go even for raft foundation also okay and uh, below the uh, raft foundation you will have a pcc as i told you pile cap raft pier pier cap so in buildings we call it as a column in bridges we call it as a pier okay so above the pier there will be a pier cap and abutments as i told you for every bridge there will be two ends which is supported by the abutments okay so abutments and abutment wall okay so let me show you one by one yeah first one is piles okay so first of all uh, whenever uh, you know the bridge is under construction okay when the soil is weak for example if you are constructing a bridge uh, in a river okay usually the soil will be very weak so then you will go for pile foundations okay these are the piles right see after casting a piles so definitely you have to construct a pile cap right so this is what the this is what the pile cap pile over the pile there will be a pile cap understand okay so this is how the pile cap is going to be casted with the form work okay so you can see here very clearly the reinforcement which is uh, projected uh, outside okay these are all pile reinforcement okay pile reinforcement will be inserted into the pile cap so then only there will be a proper connectivity between pile cap and pile clear right so this is how the pile cap looks like next raft foundation see every time we won't go for piles why because piles are suitable only when the soil is weak okay so like you know rivers and all for example if you want to construct a flyover okay the bridge the bridge flyover okay uh so definitely we will go for raft foundation okay raft foundation in the sense 
so like this so this is what the raft foundation where you will have a mat okay bottom mat and top mat so over that you are going to have the foundation okay and next one is pier see how the pier looks like this is the pile and this is the pile cap okay and this is what the pier so pier will also be considered as a substructure why because so few bridges like when they are uh, constructed over a river so definitely there will the, the pier will be submerged uh, in into the uh, high flood levels okay hfl kanna kinne untai so by that we can consider even pier and pier caps also as a substructures okay this is what the pier and this is what the pier cap okay over the pier cap only the bearings will be provided clear right so next see this is what the pier cap this is what i am talking about pier cap pier cap will be provided above the pier okay so this is what the pier cap yeah so pier cap is going to be casted with a huge form work and the pier cap reinforcement will be lifted and provided i mean placed in the pier cap form work okay and this is what an abutment see for every bridge at at both ends you will have an abutment this is what uh, uh, yesterday we have seen in the uh, diagram Th this is the wing wall right this is the wing wall and this is an abutment yeah yeah so this is an abutment and this is the beam right rcc beams or it might be a psc beam on rcc beam and this is the crash barrier or railing okay and this is the pier so in the right hand side you can see very clearly this is an abutment okay and this is the wing wall the walls which will be supported okay uh, walls which will support the soil okay inside the inside soil right and this is the abutment abutment cap got it over the abutment cap again you will have a deck and crash barrier or railing will be provided okay this is what an abutment wall okay these comes under the substructure categories and let's see what are the components comes under the superstructure pedestal what do you mean pedestal pedestal anna bearings anna okate okay why because we are going to provide bearing over the pedestal okay so what is the purpose of bearing as i told you bearings will be provided to transfer load from superstructure to substructure okay so where bearings are going to be provided bearings are going to be provided over the pedestals okay i will show you what are the pedestals and how they looks like and above the pedestal there will be rcc or psc girders okay girder what is the difference between beam and girder amma beam ki girder ki difference enti beam will have a limited depth okay girders will have more in depth around more than 2 meters of depth unda anamata okay so why depth varies uh, between the beams and girder why because a beams which are having more in depth will have more load carrying capacity okay obviously why because if you see your pure bending equation right so depth when the depth is increasing your bending stress will be increase ante kada right so when your depth is increasing deflection will get decreased so that is the reason why when you have long spans obviously you will go for more depth beams so depth eppudaithe penchutamo beams ni we should not call them as a beam we should call them as a girder right so that girders they will they will be in a form of an rcc or they will be in a form of a pcc okay and next is slabs slabs we call slabs in b in buildings but in bridges we should call them as a decks and crash barrier or railing okay and dirt wall wing wall retaining wall approach slab so these are the elements comes under the superstructure okay let me show you one by one what is pedestal what is the girder slabs decks and everything okay yeah first one is pedestal and bearing see over the pier over the pier or oh sir over the pier cap so why because sometimes uh, they will cast a pier and pier cap in a single member as a single member if you see even in our lnt metro they won't have pier and pier cap 
separately okay peer peer cap they they can cast as a single member like this ela kuda cast cheyachu okay so by that i can differentiate the vertical post as a peer and this uh, sloped one is a peer cap okay so over the peer cap there is a reinforcement right so this reinforcement is is provided to cast a pedestal okay for casting a pedestal so this reinforcement is going to be provided okay so after casting you can see like this see the left hand picture left side picture chonnama this reinforcement is casted as a pedestal like this over the pedestal there will be bearings this is what the bearing okay now now mouse cursor joined okay so this is what a bearing so this bearing will transfer load from superstructure to substructure okay so uh, if you see the right hand side of the picture so see the my mouse so this is a portion where the load will transfer from super to substructure okay clear right andarki ardham avutunnamma so please respond yes sir yes right next bearing over the pedestal bearings will be provided okay so uh, just now i have shown you right bearing which will be provided over the pedestal okay like this over the pedestal so again uh, if if i want to go in deep there are different types of bearings there will be elastomeric bearings there will be pod bearings okay elastomeric bearings in the sense uh, the, the, the bearings will be like you know rubber kind of uh, material okay pod bearings will be kind of metallic kind of things and matter ikkada whatever uh, here in the picture these bearings are uh, metal bearings okay uh, uh, if you see in our flyovers whenever you come across any flyover in our hyderabad you can try to see clearly there will be elastomeric elastomeric bearings which will be made up of rubber okay hard rubber okay like like that so this is what a bearing bearing will be provided at this portion and next one superstructure deck okay i think everyone know about uh, uh, deck so which is uh, used for passage okay over the over the uh, bridge i mean so over the girder we are going to provide a slab slab or a deck okay so you can see it clearly this is a crash barrier and this is a sidewalk at the sidewalk you can find the curb also right and this is a wearing surface wearing surface will be done with bitumen and this is what an expansion joint so expansion joint will be provided for every span right so why we are going to provide the expansion joint why because due to temperatures the steel which is provided in the slab or in the deck will try to expand okay if you are not providing the expansion joint there will be possibility of cracks expansion thermal cracks okay to control the thermal cracks you have to provide expansion joint for every span you there should be not there should be no continuity of the slab definitely for every uh, you know 15 to 20 meters of the span you have to cut the slab and you have to provide the expansion joint okay and this is why an approach slab as i showed you yesterday approach slab means at every entrance of the bridge there will be a slab which we should call it as a approach slab and mother okay right next see this is the girders right see you can see it clearly this is the pier and this is the pier cap over the pier cap you can find the pedestals kanchana pedestals over the pedestal there will be a bearing bearing meek ikkada detail ga kanipichadu but there is there is a bearing over the bearing there is a girder chudandi all these are pre stressed girders okay pre stressed girders so this is how our uh, flyovers looks like in our hyderabad kada right all these are girders or sometimes guys please mute yourself okay these are all girders yeah next deck slab see how the slabs are going to be laid okay see how the slabs are going to be casted as i just now i showed you girder kada din paina slab will be laid how it is going to be laid let's see these are these three are girders okay over the girder you you can see the concrete topping slab right so this is how the slab is going to be casted to connect all the girders together okay so there are three girders these three girders are supposed to be connected together how they are going to be connected together 
by providing the slab on the top of the girder okay that's why there will be some reinforcement which will, which will be which will be uh, you know uh, provided on the top of the girder to connect the slab and the girder together understand so that is how the slab and decks i mean girders are going to be slab and deck and deck and uh, girders are going to be connected together okay and next see the dirt wall and wing wall or retaining wall one second yeah so dirt wall and wing wall or retaining wall so here let me show you clearly what is dirt wall what is wing wall and what is retaining wall see this is what an abutment okay the abutment now mouse ni follow avandi this is what an abutment this is the abutment cap okay now see what is dirt wall idi dirt wall kanipistunna this wall is called dirt wall right this wall is called dirt wall this is abutment cap and this is an abutment okay observe cheyandi this is what an dirt wall this is what an abutment wall this is an abutment okay and uh, retaining wall so this is completely retaining wall we can call it as a retaining wall or it can also be called as a wing wall okay so why because for a bridge there will be two walls this is left hand side and there will be bridge there will be wall on the right hand side also so these walls are something like wings to the bridge and wala what ne wing walls under okay so retaining walls so this is what a retaining wall okay so retaining walls will be provided on either side of the bridge it side untundi that side kuda untundi in between this retaining wall what will be there there will be completely soil which will be ramped okay so because every bridge won't start uh, at its elevated height it should start from the ground level and then you will go to elevated height that ramp is completely filled with soil so when it filled with soil definitely that soil is to be arrested on either both sides by providing the retaining walls okay with the help of retaining panels understand so that is what about a retaining wall right and next approach slab this is what i am talking about uh, for every entrance of the bridge there will be an approach slab let us consider uh, this is the way how you know vehicle is moving on okay so vehicle is starting from here okay okay so you are entering into the bridge bridge will start from here bridge ikka nin start out okay so when you are entering to the bridge so this is the approach slab this portion is an approach slab so where it is approaching to the bridge bridge ki approach avutundi okay so by that it is called an approach slab approach slab is completely an rcc slab which is going to be provided at the entrance of the bridge okay so then you can enter into the bridge anamata okay so this is what an approach slab right so here also you can uh, see it clearly approach slab right approach slab and then entering into the bridge so now the bridge is to the right hand right hand side so now vehicle is going towards right okay so like this this is what an approach slab got it yeah sir chaparma yeah yeah any doubt chapandi ఎవరు అడుగుతున్నారు క్వశ్చన్ ఏమైనా డౌట్స్ ఉన్నాయా వాయిస్ మధ్య మధ్యలో ఆగిపోతుంది వాయిస్ ఆగుతుందా సో మేబీ నెట్ ప్రాబ్లం ఇప్పుడు నౌ ద వాయిస్ ఇస్ క్లియర్ ఇప్పుడు క్లియర్ గా ఉన్నా వాయిస్ హలో హలో ఇస్ మై వాయిస్ ఇస్ క్లియర్ hello ma everyone respond out now voice clear unda hello how hello i can't hear you ma ever me voice nak vinpichadaledu can anyone respond 
Okay. Right. So as just now I'm talking about a major bridge, which I have executed at Karimnagar, isn't it? So the length of that bridge is 293.29 meters. Okay. This is the whole uh, bridge. So this is the bridge diagram, right? So if you see the real uh, uh, diagrams, okay, of, uh, I mean, um, structural drawings. So this is how this bridge drawing looks like. This is the whole uh, bridge of 293 meters of length. Okay, this side is an abutment and the right hand side is also an abutment. Okay, so completely there are, uh, you know, uh, 10, 10 piers. Okay, so 10 piers and you will have around uh, 9, 10, 11, 11 spans. Okay, so because there are uh, 10 piers and two abutments. So that means you will have 11 spans. Okay, so every span is around 29 meters of span. You only need 29 meters of length and matter. And a pier, one pier to other pier, the length of it is 29 meters. Okay, and the length of uh, uh, span between abutment to first pier is around 18 meters. Okay, so that is how uh, the long, the major bridge, uh, you know, structure looks like. This is a longitudinal structural elevation of a bridge. Okay. So if you see the uh, major bridge detailing, okay. So this is how the detailings of the bridge uh, will be represented in the drawing sheets. Uh, total length of the bridge, number of abutments, number of piers, number of spans, number of PSC girders, number of RCC girders, you know, number of, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, bearings, bearings, nothing but pedestals. Oh, what is the carriageway width, okay. Or oh, carriageway width and so the width which is uh, you know where the vehicles is moving on so that is what a carriageway or carriage width right and uh, what is a single lane width as per code we all know the width of uh, each lane is 3.75 meters and then uh, in your transportation i think you already studied so the uh, width of each lane will be 3.75 meters this is the standard carriageway width as per NHAI, National Highway Authority of India. Okay. And number of lanes of this bridge, which I'm talking about. So the number of lanes is three meters, sorry, three lanes. Okay. Number of uh, crash barriers. How many crash barriers will be there for a bridge? So there will be two crash barriers. One will be on left hand side, the other will be on right hand side, isn't it? So number of railings. So what is the difference between crash barrier and railing? Crash barrier and railing difference in terms of See, if you see the bridge like this, okay, this is bridge on Kondi. Okay, right? So this is one way and this is the other way. See, crash barrier will be provided here for a bridge. Crash barrier, it can provide just that. Okay, and railing will be provided here. Okay, railing will be provided here. So then what is the purpose of this width? This width will be provided for footpath. So because bridges are not only for road, I mean vehicular transportation. Okay, even if anyone want to cross the bridge, so where they are going to cross? So they are supposed to cross only in their lane. So that is the reason why bridges will have a crash barrier. Okay along with railing this railing will be provided at the end edge of the bridge bridge ke edge side provide chestaru and in between the crash barrier and the railing this way is for footpath okay artham avutunda so that is how on both sides of the bridges there will be footpath lane so footpath lane compulsory untundi so that's how railing will be provided at the edge of the bridge and here crash barrier will be there and in between the crash barriers, vehicle will have the, their carriageway. Vehicle, vehicular movement. Okay. So that's how railing. So uh, here in this uh, bridge, uh, there is only one railing. And why there is only one railing? Why? Because there is only one way footpath. Footpath only one way. Okay. Other way footpath is a bridge. So that's why number of railings are only one. Okay. Why? Because there are two bridges. One bridge will have 
lay uh, um, footpath lane on the left side. Other bridge will have footpath lane on the left hand side, sir, left hand side. So that's why for this bridge, okay, there is only one footpath lane. That's why there is only one railing and mud. Okay, and number of approach slabs, number of approach slabs. How many number of approach slabs are there? Two number of approach slabs for any bridge. There will be two number of approach slabs. Okay, one will be on this side and the other will be on other side. Okay, so that's how. Uh, the components of the bridges are classified. Clear? Guys, under the bridge components are the main area. Please respond. Guys, have you all understood the bridge components? Guys, please respond. Anyone? Hello, guys, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Emma, I'm going to listen to my voice. Hello? Panduranga, I'm going to listen to my voice. Sir, sir, it is hard. Audible, gada. So, have you all understood the bridge components, substructure and superstructure components? Hello, guys. You have to be interactive, ma'am. Mir chipte ne, so I can continue further. If you are not responding, so how can I know that whether you understood or not? Do you have any doubts in bridge components? Hello, Madhav Rao. Okay, let me continue. I don't know what is the problem. Yeah. So today, uh, I mean, the next topic, so which we are going to discuss is, uh, you know, uh, key elements of the bridges, key elements of the bridge transportation. Yeah, so I think we discussed this. Sorry, one second. One second, so I think some animation I need to stop it. Yeah. Uh, let's see the bridge planning. Okay, so whenever we want to start any bridge uh, construction, so definitely you have to go through all these studies. Okay, so this is what the bridge planning. So very important. So please uh, uh, try to note down all these. Okay, the first one is traffic studies, and second one is hydro technical studies, geo technical studies, environmental considerations, alternatives for bridge type, economic feasibility. And bridge selection and detailed design. Okay, so these are very important uh, before planning of any kind of bridge. Okay, so to you know uh, 